Good morning and welcome back to Coffee Break. So Easter is coming up very soon. We're in the midst of Holy Week right now. It feels way too soon for Easter. It is very early this year yeah. and last year it was really late. So we had this crazy jump back. Right, yeah. yeah. So I'm still wrapping my head around that, but continue, please. <laughs> so um, for many people, Easter means baskets and bunnies who mysteriously lay eggs filled with candy. <laughs> I don't fully understand that. <laughs> I thought the Easter Bunny like just had this never-ending supply of eggs. I would, I didn't think he was actually producing Where does the he, eggs. Does he steal the eggs? Though? Oh, I never questioned how he got eggs filled with candy. Actually, actually, the real meaning of Easter. Oh, okay. <laughs> what most people in the Christian tradition celebrate on Easter Sunday is the resurrection of Jesus which is really like it's a huge deal it's the crux of christianity like this is salvation folks yeah <laughs> so um to honor that tradition and um all of our religious titles that is really the beginning of our program i think mm -hmm. our first books were religious titles um we thought we would share four recommended books for talking about Easter with your kids, um, either if it's introducing it to them for the first time or kind of reminding them of this is why we celebrate. So my personal favorite book for Easter is At Jerusalem's Gate by mm -hmm. Nikki Grimes. And this is, it's a collection of poems um, and it takes you starting with Palm Sunday and going through the resurrection. And um, each poem is written by like a different person's perspective, mm. which is really interesting. So you've got Mary, you've got the disciples, but you also have like Pilate's wife and oh. like the tree that was chopped down to create the cross and like all of these really unique perspectives are in here. Um, and there's all different kinds of like forms and everything. And uh, the illustrations are just gorgeous. They're these beautiful, sophisticated woodcuts and um, yeah, I mean, they're just, they're so filled with life. Mm -hmm. and, um, and in the back here, you actually have all of the Bible verse references oh, that she helpful. used. Yeah, that she used as inspiration for creating the poem. So you can read the poem and then go back and look through and say, okay, this is where she's drawing this from. You know, how would you interpret this scene? And yeah, it opens up a lot of really good discussions. I think this book is particularly good to share with older readers. Um, it is a bit longer and the poems are pretty sophisticated, but it's also just, it really goes in depth um, into the story and it doesn't shy away from, you know, like the, the kind of really tragic things that happen, you know, mm -hmm. as well as the happier moments too. Right. Um, but yeah, it's just, and with all of the unique perspectives, it really shows you a really familiar story in a totally new way. So, oh, yeah, yeah. So I think this is a really good thing to share with kids who, you know, have heard the Easter story a million times and are like, oh, why do we have to vi revisit this again every year? Like, this is perfect for them. Mm -hmm. The Easter story by Brian Wildsmith um, is a pretty traditional telling of the story um, with a slight twist that it's it's told from the perspective of the donkey that carries Jesus into Jerusalem. Hmm. So um, it's it's enough like the donkey is kind of there and explaining it so that it's not this distant unknown narrator. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't really take you out of the story. Mm -hmm. Every spread has some sort of gold embossing mm -hmm. on it, um, which is really interesting. And I especially love um, the Garden of Gethsemane scene. This is just incredibly beautiful. Mm -hmm. The purple and the gold and yeah, it's when just, you move it, it's just so yeah, shiny. It shimmers. Yeah. yeah. And I just thought it was a really interesting choice. Um, but the other thing too is, I think um, typically when we think about Jesus's life, we think of it in like shades of like dusty brown and then Jesus and angels are in white, you right. know, like yeah. pretty basic colors. But Brian Wildsmith really um, does not shy away from color. Um, and his angels are wearing like anything but white. So here's some angels around Jesus's tomb or... Um, yeah, that's a really bright book. Yeah, and like at the Ascension. I just had never actually like thought of angels that way, but the just the vibrancy seems really fitting. Mm -hmm. So a book for younger readers that I think would be really good to share is um, Jesus by Anselm Grun. I think I'm pronouncing yeah, I think that right. Close, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Um, this is, I mean, it is kind of traditional in the sense that it takes you through Jesus's life and everything, but the illustrations are just really vibrant and warm and inviting. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the text is really like clear and simplistic. It doesn't talk down to you, but it's accessible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, I like, I like for younger readers that it doesn't go into the super gory details of the crucifixion mm -hmm. because, you know, some kids are squeamish and some parents are kind of hesitant to share all of that with right. them. Um, so this is actually like the crucifixion scene. They've got the illustration of the soldiers, you know, hauling him away and you get the seriousness of mm -hmm. what's going on. Like that is absolutely conveyed but it doesn't have the really like scary kind of factor yeah. to it. So I think this is really good for um, kids who are just starting to learn about the Easter story and just trying to grasp the basic concepts of it. Finally, um, we're gonna recommend uh, The Life of Jesus, an illustrated rosary. Um, as the subtitle suggests, this is um, the very Catholic perspective on the life of Jesus. So it really does walk through praying the rosary with the 20 mysteries. Um, so through that, you get through Jesus's life. And um, so Mary Billingsley explains um, the prayers of the rosary and the beads on the rosary. So for each mystery, um, Mary Billingsley has an illustration and then in between each Hail Mary, she has her own text um, about the mystery. Um, so things that you would kind of guide you through the prayer and the meditation of this mystery. Um, and I think her, her illustrations are fascinating because she builds, she finds objects and kind of builds like a still life diorama and then she paints that scene. Mm -hmm. So it it's kind of this mix between painting and real. So it's just really interesting way to look at Jesus's life. Um, yeah, they're beautiful. Yeah. And it's totally one of a kind, you know? Yeah. I love, um, this is her resurrection illustration. And just like the thing, I'm trying to think like what I have thought of these things, you know, this garland of flowers all the way around and an actual plant like behind this cross. It's just like, I would love to talk about her thoughts through all of that. Mm -hmm. So, so if you're interested um, in the Life of Jesus Illustrated Rosary, you might also be interested in a craft that um, Jessica posted on our blog last year, which is how to make your own rosary. So, if maybe you don't have access to buying a rosary, if you have beads and string, you can make your own. Yeah, and if rosaries aren't your thing, there's also 39 other crafts, 40 crafts for the 40 Days of Lent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, I'm sure you can find one craft that is completely doable and fun and beautiful. Yeah. We don't tend to mention our religious titles all that often here um, because right now they're not the bulk of what we're publishing. Um, but if you're interested in more religious book recommendations, um, we have a few that we think you should start with. Um, so one of our oldest titles is the Child Story Bible. This has been in print since 1934. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's it's a consistent bestseller. I mean, we keep it in print because there are so many people that rely on this for reading through the Bible with their children. Mm -hmm. Another favorite, I think, is um, Images of God for Young Children. And this is a much more recent book. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this was published in 2010. But it's really great. It kind of explores all of the different metaphors that the Bible uses for God and like explains how these things work as metaphors and mm -hmm. everything. And the illustrations are just so beautiful mm -hmm. and just really, really accessible. And I love this book because you can just really take your time and, you know, soak in everything. Yeah. And you can see like from how simple the text is that it's great for young readers. Yeah, exactly. And um, actually, we've got a new religious title coming out just uh, in a couple next months. Next month. Yeah. Oh, my God. Is it next month? It's yeah. next month. Wow. Uh, and this is actually by the same illustrator. This is Our Father. And this is um, kind of an explanation of the Lord's Prayer. So it takes you through every line in the Lord's Prayer and just really explores what you're saying when you say these words, mm -hmm. which I think is really great because when you're first teaching readers 
you know, these words and everything. Like, you know, there's lots of big words in there. There's lots of kind of archaic language that yeah. and isn't like, necessarily why user friendly. Is this really old prayer relevant for me today? Right, yeah. exactly. So it does a good job of explaining all of that. And yeah, it's the same thing, like really beautiful illustrations, really simple text. Um, so it's absolutely great for sharing. I'm really excited about this book. So hopefully these recommendations um, are helpful for when you're talking to your kids this weekend about Holy Week and Easter. So however you choose to celebrate it, we hope you have a very happy Easter. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next week. So I'm saying like you can start oh, out with like, I thought you were going to say that over again. <laughs> all of a sudden like does he have a network of elves like Santa does like making these eggs or all chickens. year round? Yeah. He has like chickens. enslaved chickens. That's terrible. I know. Just yeah. cut everything I said out.